Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be the next in the series of update videos for my goals series, right? So this is going to be for Q3. Just going to talk about my personal goals, what's been going on, what I've been doing, what things are looking like, and just an overall update, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So if any of you guys haven't kind of those videos, essentially the overall goal, right? I did one at the beginning of the year or the end of last year was just to accumulate, right? Pretty, pretty easy goal. Um, so after Q1 though, did decide to do an update video because it's not what I was expecting, right? I was expecting, you know, crappy price action for us to go down even further after all the FTX stuff, but ended up being nothing but profit taking, right? Which kind of caught me by surprise. Um, ended up being a good choice and just kind of continue that trend, right? So after April, actually, though, things did change, right? BTC kind of stayed in that range, ultimately did pump back up. Same with ETH. ETH actually has held up very, very well. Um, not the case with alts, though, right? So let's go over that real quick. So currently, when I did that video, it was the peak of the April run, right? It was about mid-April. BTC was about 30300 when I did that video. Currently, it's at 26,000, right? Hasn't been at this price, just happened a few days ago. Ultimately, back in June, things were pretty bearish, right? It looked like we were gonna go down further. So it was around that time we had all the SEC news about like the list of 40 coins that were gonna be potentially securities and yada, yada, yada. So it did look like things were gonna get worse, but then we got all the ETF news, right? So that's this big candle right here brought us up to 30K and ultimately we've been hovering in that range, right? Um, just recently we did drop, but the thing that had kind of me, had let me like caught off guard almost was just the fact that BTC was so high, alts were really low, right? Especially in comparison to the beginning of the year, right? A lot of the alts were somewhat close to the price of the beginning of the year, but BTC was at 16,000 back then. Obviously way higher. So to me, that was very indicative of alts potentially getting wrecked especially any of the bigger alts especially the things in the top 100 um it's kind of what happened right we did see a correction it's not even a huge correction why right? we went from 28 29 down to 26 which felt dramatic because it's been sideways for so long but ultimately the alts did get wrecked because again a lot of them were pretty low right if we look at like avax so i'll give avax as the example if we go back Let's go back even further. Let's go back to the lows, right? Which their lows were back in December. Price is actually lower than back then. So it's actually lower than even the FTX lows. And ultimately they had a lower low in December. It's lower than then, right? We're at $10.87 back then. We're at $10.39 right now, right? And this is the thing I've been talking about the past few months is that BTC is kind of due for a correction, right? We've been going up only since the beginning of the year. And we're in a bear market, right? We're gonna be due for that correction. So even just looking at the one year chart, right? Looking from here, you can see here that peak in April, right? You can really see it here and you can just see it's just been downward since then, right? In comparison with Bitcoin, if we go on the one year chart, we've been up only, right? April, we did have that peak. We did go down a bit, but ultimately we did go right back up, right? And that was the case with BTC and ETH, but not necessarily with the alts, right? So to me, those have been the better buys. So last quarter, did not really buy anything. It was pure profit taking. This quarter so far, there were a few opportunities, right? One of them was in June when we had that altcoin news. And then now, right, we did dip down again. Um, so did buy a little bit, didn't buy like a whole lot, not super aggressive, only because these are around the price points that I did accumulate back then, right? It did accumulate pretty aggressively. Ultimately, I'm looking for more aggressive price reductions if it happens, right? May not happen, but again, I did purchase aggressively at this point. So ideally, I'm looking for better entry points. Am I gonna buy some at this point? Am I gonna DCA? Yes, right? And that's kind of what I was preparing for. Um, ultimately, it's not like I'm doing TA or I'm not some kind of crazy trader. It's just traditionally August, September are horrible months, right? So that's kind of what I was preparing for. What made me more confident that it was gonna happen was just the fact that we've been so bullish all the way till now right i didn't think it was gonna happen this fast though i thought this was like the prices were at right now i was expecting like mid-september kind of caught me off guard um the one i did buy a little bit more than usual was flux right main reason because it is significantly lower than what it was in the past right 
I bought somewhat aggressively in the 40 cent range twice, both times when it happened, between 40, 45 cents. It did go lower, right? It did go down to 30 cents, which was a price target I did have in mind. I didn't think we are gonna hit it yet. Um, luckily, I did have a buy order in. It did hit at 30 cents. I mean, we're pretty much there again anyway, so it's not like it was some crazy, crazy luck thing. We're pretty much there anyway. And it's dipping, right? And again, this is one that dipped significantly more. So that's why I accumulated more. Again, I'm waiting for other opportunities. Um, I am trying to narrow down the amount of coins that I have. Um, but ultimately, Flux, I did buy. I'm pretty much set, though. Not really going to buy a whole lot more unless we get a significant price reduction from here. If it goes down into the teens or something, I'll add more. But ultimately, it's what kind of has me a little weary is the fact that it's just had really bad price appreciation, right? Yes, it's a bear market. Yes, this is the time for that. But the fact that they've been trying to like push it so hard, right? There's been a lot of marketing. They've been doing a lot, been doing a lot of interviews. You can tell they've intentionally been trying to get out there. And at least as far as the price appreciation goes, it ain't working, right? Especially in comparison to the competitors, right? The difference here though, and I think this is kind of starting to bite them in the ass, is the fact that they do so many things, right? Which is one of the reasons that has me bullish on it, right? But the fact that they're like dabbling in and everything, but they're not necessarily like killing it in one specific thing, right? The proof of use for work thing is extremely intriguing, but again, it's not even going to be released until Q1. And ultimately, it's just not enough hype behind it, right? Especially in comparison to other coins that are doing something similar, right? I'll give the example with like Render, okay? It's just, you know, a marketplace for compute power. In this case, specifically rendering. It's going to be other use cases. You're going to be able to rent that power. But it's essentially just a marketplace, just like the proof of use for work thing is going to be. The difference, though, this thing is getting hype. It is getting traction. It is getting attention right it's currently ranked number 72 right and the difference here is that they focus on one thing and apparently they're doing it well because the hype is there right so if we look at the price appreciation look at the one year chart look at the price back in january we're in the 40 cent range right we did hit a peak at two dollars and 70 cents right so pretty high again it's off of that ai narrative just because it's that marketplace for compute power um, ultimately, it is going down, but comparing it from back then till now, dollar forty, still very good. The other thing is the fact that look at the chart. This is one of those coins, and this is another thing you should be paying attention to these pumps, right? Specifically, look at the projects you're into and see how they react. This is one of those coins that every little pump, every little bullish action, this thing is gets a lot of traction, right? So that's one of those things you want to keep in mind because chances are it may get the same attention in the bull run, right? So these are the kinds of things you want to look at, you want to look for. Does this mean that's going to happen? No, not necessarily, right? Even with flux, does it necessarily mean that oh, it's going to be lackluster? That doesn't mean that either, right? But these are things you want to look at. You want to look at the competition. What are they doing? What's different? What are they doing that's different from them? Why are they getting this attention, right? Um, another one, also Akash Network. Some of you guys remember, might remember this from back in 2021. If any of you guys were looking at any of the mining things, remember they had this little miner that they had, which was going to be like a computer thing. You know, they were selling like cloud computing, but it was a specific little miner that they were selling. That thing kind of flopped and essentially they kind of fell off the face of the earth. I haven't even heard of them until recently. Been seeing them pump and I was like, what the heck's going on? I haven't really taken a deep dive, but I mean, look at the price action, right? And essentially it's a marketplace for compute power also. Right, but look at the price action even just since May. They were at 23 cents. Currently, even with everything going on, they're at $1.51. Okay, they're about to crack the top 100. Okay, so these are the things that kind of had me a little, not necessarily worried. I think it's still going to do its thing, but it may not pump as much as some of the others. Right, so that's not like bearish on it or um, it's not going to do well. I think it's still going to do well. Right, I think it's still even from this price point. I think it's a good entry point because I think it's still going to 10x from here, right? If we go base it off the previous all-time highs, it's at three bucks, right? So it's a good 10x from here. And then factor in the halving, and there's going to be another halving pretty much right in the middle of that bull market. So factor that in also. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. These are the types of things I look at, right? So I'm committed to X amount of coins. 
but I'm not necessarily married to those coins, right? If I see a good swap opportunity and I'm kind of thinking that this one's gonna do better long-term wise, not just off of one little pump, I just like the direction that that one's going in, I may potentially swap into it, right? For me, Flux is gonna be a long hold, only because I've been holding, I have a good amount, I have the amount that I want, it's one that's gonna be there for me. But I would keep my eye open on these guys, especially Render. Render's one I've been trying to possibly accumulate, but to me, it just, it already ran up so much. I don't know if it's gonna do another 10X from here, who knows, but it's one I am following. Um, but those are the kinds of things I look for. And then just to deep dive a little bit into my specific plan, a lot of people have asked, like, how do I come up with the numbers? Like, how do you set goals? Like, what are you looking at? So the way I'm doing it, right? So my big thing with the profit taking all that stuff, a big part of the reason also is just to consolidate quite a bit. Instead of being into like 20 coins, 20 altcoins, 25, whatever, the end goal is to narrow it down to at least 10 coins, right? Not at least, but 10 coins, potentially more. And as far as how I come up with the goal amount that I want, I'm basing it off of my personal price prediction of what it's going to hit in the bull market and how much I would need to accumulate $20,000 worth, right? So essentially, let me give the example with ABEX, right? So essentially, it's at 10 bucks right now. My bull market prediction is going to be less than the previous all-time high. Realistically, I think it's probably going to do better only because it is one I'm bullish on. They're developing. A lot of ecosystems, a lot of sponsorships, a lot of, you know, partnerships that they're having. Overall, pretty bullish on it. But my price target is about 100 bucks, right? So basing it off of $100, how much would I need to get $20,000 worth for the bull market, right? At that point, it would be 200 ABEX, right? If I'm setting that price point. So that's how I set my accumulation goal, right? So the goal is to eventually have 200 of them. Right, DCAing, looking for better opportunities and trying to get that cost basis down as low as possible. So getting that 20K number over the span of 10 different coins, right? For a total goal of 200K. Somewhat ambitious, but I'm trying to be as realistic as possible, right? I am trying to be aggressive, not crazy aggressive, and it's not like I'm throwing every extra cent I have. A lot of it just has to do with the amount that I'm allocating per month, which is somewhat aggressive, right? and then on top of what I have already accumulated, right? So that's just my personal goal. That's how I'm doing it. I'm not saying that this is the best way or even a good way. This is just the way I'm doing it and how I'm looking at things, right? So you have to also be realistic no matter how you decide to do your, your accumulation goals because just because it did that in the past, does that necessarily mean it's gonna happen again? No, right? We've seen many, many examples where I never hit the previous all-time high, or as a matter of fact, it hit like half of previous all-time high. Right. But this is why I encourage you, once you narrow down your coins, which ones you feel good about, get in that ecosystem, participate in that network, get into their discord, get into their Twitter. This is another thing I'm always hearing about. Oh, so and so coin, they're not developing. They're not doing nothing. I don't hear anything. It's because you're putting yourself in a little bubble where you're not going to see any of those things. Right. If you're not actively in that community, you're not active in that network. Like I participate in AVEX, I participate in Soul, I do the whole DeFi thing. I do NFT. I do all of that stuff. Right. So that's why a lot of these coins that I'm bullish on is because I'm in that ecosystem. I see what's going on. I see what they're building and I like it. Right. But it's also because I follow those things. If I just follow what's on my Twitter and on my YouTube, the way the algorithm works, you're just gonna get the same flow of information. You have to actively go out and look for it, right? Like a good example in the GPU world is like with Ergo. Oh, Ergo's not doing anything. I don't hear anything about them. If you follow them and you're in their Discord, you're on their Twitter, they do a lot of stuff, right? They are, there is a lot of development going on. It's just, again, if you put yourself in that bubble, you're not gonna see any of those things, okay? If you're interested in a coin, Go in there, participate in that network, see what they're doing, see what they're building, get in there, get active in that community. And that way you can really make a good determination. Like the reason I like AVAX or I like Soul is because fast transactions, a lot of TVL. I like participating in the network. It's very easy, it's very intuitive. Again, a big thing that I've been harping on is adoption for this next bull market. So I mean, that's the reason I'm big on Soul is because it's extremely easy to use, right? Cheap transaction fees, and just the interface itself, like the whole with their phone, the, the narrative they're going with there makes things super easy for people who have no idea what crypto is to get into it. 
right? So those are the kinds of things I look for, what I'm doing. I'm not necessarily saying to go into those projects or that those are good projects. Those are just the value I see in those things and what I'm looking at, right? So I have a goal of at least 10 coins, right? Set up those accumulation goals and then from there continue to add on, right? Either add an 11, 12, 13th coin or coins that I'm feeling more bullish on, add on more to those, right? And I'm not necessarily married to those coins either, but for the most part, the coins I follow, the coins I'm into, I'm confident. I feel good about regardless of what's going on. This is another tidbit of news or advice I will give is that once you are in those ecosystems and you feel confident about that, don't follow the overall sentiment of everybody else, right? Follow your gut, follow what you think is, follow the fundamentals of that project. Good example I'll give is all the FUD that happened with Solana last year during the FTX stuff. Fundamentally, what changed with Solana? Not a whole lot, right? Everything was FUD based off of this and that, and it's gonna go to zero, and then everybody else jumped on, right? All of crypto Twitter, all of the bigger YouTube channels, ah, Solana's going to zero, Solana's going to zero. As a person who was actively participating in that, Nothing was really changing. Things were still there. Yes, the price was tanking because of everything, because all the negative sentiment. But it's one I believed in. And I bought comfortably when it was at $12, $11, $10. I stacked pretty good, right? And that's because, again, I'm in that ecosystem. And I'm confident in my plan. I'm confident in the things I'm going for, right? Can it go to zero still? Sure, right? But that's one that I'm placing my bets on, right? So I bought aggressively at that time. Will the prices go back that low? Probably not, but I'm comfortable with the amount I buy, even if I don't buy any more, even if it goes nowhere near that price range, right? So at this point, that's kind of how I determine what coins I buy next, which ones have dipped the hardest, and that would try to accumulate more. Like with Flux, it dipped lower than those previous lows, so that's one I'll add a little bit more, right? AVAX's current price, this is around the price I accumulated, so realistically, I did buy a little bit, but ideally, I'm waiting for a bigger dip. If it happens, right? It may not happen, but I'm comfortable with the majority of what I have. Right. So I'm willing to take that risk because, again, I'm trying to get as much as I can for the least amount of fiat. It's not like I have this 50K sitting there waiting to deploy. Right. I'm trying to do what I can with the least amount. So I'm trying to maximize what I can. Right. So just stuff to consider, stuff to think about. And that's also the reason I do a lot of like profit taking. OK, that's another one I get a lot of question on. Like, oh, how do I know when to profit take or there's really no method for that there's no like game plan it's purely up to you what i personally do again i'm not a ta guy i'm not a daily trader i'm not a leverage trader i literally just trade on sentiment when i see a good opportunity when i have a good feeling that something's gonna happen right so like overall like right now we had all this bullish action and gpu mining coins and my overall picture is i follow the cycles right i follow typically what's happened in the past so a lot of it has panned out right so like for example august and september are typically very bearish months for crypto so when i saw all this price appreciation not necessarily coin i'm gonna hold into the bull market it's not in those top 12 category so i saw opportunity to sell and i sold at that point i hit a 10x i was happy with that i'm comfortable with selling it and then putting it into another coin that i believe will do another 10x right so yes i'm taking profits but it's not like i'm just taking it and then blowing that money I'm using it to reallocate, to reinvest either into other coins, other hardware, or sometimes even that same coin, right? That's another strategy I was doing with like CKB, for example. You know, that run up in April, I sold a good chunk. Initially only sold like 10, 15%, but then I sold a little bit more, a little bit more, and then rebought on a dip, right? So doing it like that, I was able to crew more than I would by just staking it, right? But it's only because I feel confident in the fact that it was going to go down. Right. It's one of those things that you have to be comfortable with the fact that it may not go back down. Right. We might just go freaking up only. Right. Even with all this negative sentiment or even traditionally all this stuff happens. The example I'll give with that is with like Casper. Right. If you look early on. This is pretty nuts. Right. Because I had bought my little bag back in October. But I was really expecting a dip during all the FTX stuff. I was like waiting for it. I was like, come on, come on, come on. I had even taken some profits at some point and was just waiting for it. And it's kind of crazy to think. I know it looks like a tiny run up now, but at the time it was a crazy run up because of everything going on. Yet it was still going up. 
right? So that was one that even with all the negative action going on and it should have been going down, it did its own thing, right? And this is one thing to factor in, especially with these smaller cap coins. If they're in price discovery mode, sometimes they give no Fs as to what the rest of the market's doing. And Casper did this multiple times, right? And that's another thing that had me bullish and I was like, that is pretty nuts that the rest of the market is tanking, it's on fire, crypto's going to zero, and Caspo's freaking mooning, right? That was another big indicator, like, man, that's crazy, right? Especially being a small cap altcoin at a time where everybody was super bearish. Even, like, a lot of the money, that's around the time I started my channel, and that was the reason I even started the channel, was because a lot of people weren't making content. People were discouraged by everything going on and like, oh, I don't want to do content. There was just lackluster, right? Versus to me, it seemed super interesting, everything going on. And that's why I decided to just do it, right? But um, just something to factor in, right? A lot of these coins are in price discovery, especially these smaller cap coins. So like Alephium or like XNA, um, any of these small coins, it's possible for them to just continue to go up even during a bearish time. Right, so just because that's happening doesn't it may not necessarily affect these smaller cap coins, especially the smaller, especially the ones that are like in the two thousand, right? As far as their ranking for market cap, so just something to consider there, right? Because that's one thing I did learn with Caspa. There was another time I was waiting for a dip, and it was around that time actually. During that run up, I was like, "There's no way it's too hot. It's gonna correct. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting," and it felt like it never happened. <laughs> right? And that's around the time that I decided like this is definitely a hundred percent hold for me, right? So it's one I did skim off the top, like recently when it hit this other high over here, I did skim a little bit, like 10%, nothing crazy, just with the the thought process that come August, September, and then the KS3 is coming out that we might have a retracement. Overall, it's been holding up very well, right? And it's because a lot of it has to do with the fact that it just got so much traction, right? To me, that has me even bullish again. Is the fact that so many like trader channels or big crypto channels are all talking about it, right? Like it's like a lot of people were asking, oh, what do you think your, what's your bull market price prediction? And I already told, I was like, it's already exceeded my <laughs> bull market price prediction, right? At that point from where I came in at, it's like over a 20X right now. It's crazy. And the fact that I'm still bullish on it, right? Do I think it's going to do another 20X from here? No, realistically, it's probably like a 5X just because of the market cap size, right? But it could potentially do way more because this one does have the potential to crack the top 20, like do like big, big ETH kind of things, right? Will it? We'll see, but it does have that potential, right? So it's one that I definitely am holding, but some stuff to keep in mind so overall though i am accumulating right hopefully we do get a little bit more is it possible that we do not dip yeah right but again i'm comfortable because these are about the same prices i bought back in november december last year right ideally i'm looking for better entry points and if i don't get them that's cool right i have no issues with that but i am dcaing um part of that plan was also with my miners right so because that was the game plan and the way i do it just like I talked about in my other video, I pay all my electric out of pocket, right? So that's essentially my DCA, which by the way, shout out to Hash Forest. I liked his, the way he coined it was electrical cost averaging, right? And that's essentially what I'm doing, right? So that I pay my electric out of pocket and that's my DCA money. That's how I DCA. It's like a forced DCA, you know? But because I was thinking that there was going to be good dips with other altcoins, I decided to unplug a lot of the bigger ASICs in anticipation to use that money I was going to burn on electric on some of these bigger altcoins, right? Instead of just, could just, you know, continue to mine and swap, but realistically, I was coming to the conclusion that what if KDA drops to the point where it's unprofitable, let me just unplug, give them a little break for those, and then just accumulate some of these bigger alts, right? So far, that's the plan. Realistically, I don't think that this was going to happen again until like September. I didn't think I was going to be buying already, like literally a few days after they did that GPU mining video when I talked about taking profits, was able to reallocate a lot of that money already, right? So some stuff to think about, again, not shilly or not recommending for you to take profits unless you're in tune with the market and you're comfortable with doing that, right? And again, I'm only comfortable with doing it with, especially if I 100% dump a coin with a coin that I'm not going to be holding in 2025, right? Like I'm not going to do that with Casper. I'm not going to do that with AVAX. I might skim some off the top in anticipation that, okay, I think it's going to go lower. 
but it just depends on the individual coin itself, right? You have to kind of come up with that determination, with that game plan, right? Because again, there's no best way to do it. It's only what you're comfortable with and how you do it, right? For me, it's been extremely successful because again, I'm trying to maximize the amount of coins I get for the amount of fiat I get, right? And for me, it's been working tremendously, right? Instead of versus just completely holding and which is, I mean, it's perfectly fine also. There's nothing wrong with that either. But again, my goal is to maximize. I'm trying to maximize 100%, right? So let's talk about the mining aspect. So like I said, I did unplug the KA3 and the HS3. The FPGAs are still on, the GPUs are still on, just cause those, I'm just stacking, right? I have no issues there, that's not a whole lot. The biggest burners are the big A6, right? So that's what I'm gonna accumulate with. Um, for my K7, I do have an issue. One of my hash boards is down for the count, right? It's a troubleshooting, did narrow it down to the board, and the board is bad, right? Unfortunately, with that guy, the machine is out of warranty, right? So I have to get that thing repaired, okay? So my thought process is that I want to try different vendors, right? So I did send it out to one vendor under my Anon account, right? The goal also is to be able to do like a review on it. I don't want to do it under like the guise of creating content. Like I don't want to hit them up as like, oh, I create content. I want to do this review. I'm going to send you my hashboard and I'm going to talk because then what's going to happen, right? They're going to have a quick turnaround and it's not going to be realistic or a good representation of what it's like for everybody else, right? So I did it under my Anon account, send it. I'm going to track how long it takes how long they hang on to it, what the price is, and what happens with it, right? So it's gonna be tricky, and that's why I kinda wanna do this, and if I have other hash boards that go down, I wanna try other places just for the purpose of reviews, because I'm sure other people are gonna have issues with it. Because specifically with these Bitmain altcoin ASICs, they are the newer style boards, right? Which we talked about with some of the XPs having them. It's the boards that have that aluminum on the back of the PCBs, right? Which one of the big complaints was that they were gonna be harder to work on. And I did email quite a few places and a lot of them were not familiar with that, right? A lot of them, you know, just work on S19Js and they work on them by the truckload essentially, right? And a lot of them weren't familiar with these altcoin and they weren't sure if they were able to get like the chips, like if a chip was bad, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I ended up sending back to where I purchased it from We'll see how the process goes. I'll let you know how much it was, how long it took, just in case any of you guys have those issues. And let me know if any of you guys have done this before. If any of you guys have sent your board out to get repaired aftermarket, not just for warranty, but like through a place, right? That way we can kind of start getting ideas or start finding places when this happens. Because unfortunately, I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one. I'm sure some of you guys will have issues. That way we can start finding places like go to spots, right? To see, just to have a review on it, right? So that guy did go down. Um, the others so far have been fine. The FPGAs have been good. I've had zero issues, zero uptime issues actually. Even the M2 has been, thing has not gone down. The E100 has literally been on this entire time. No downtime, no issues, no nothing. It's just chugging along. That one is mining iron, the M2 is mining radiant, RXD, and the GPUs are also on radiant, right? Reason that I like radiant is the wattage and the fact that it's just been profitable, right? It hasn't been necessarily number one, but it's been with that range where it's been a good earner, right? Good yield, and it's been doing its thing, right? So those are continuing to stay plugged. Those are chugging along just fine. Um, so on the mining front, we're doing our thing. We're taking a little break from Kadena and Handshake. The K7, also the reason I wanted to hang on to that, not hang on to it, but continue to mine, is just the halving is coming, right? So the goal right now, stack, stack, stack. If the price goes down, especially after the halving, I'll be stacking more as well on top of mining it, right? Just because we'll see what happens because there might be a good time where it's not going to be profitable, right? So like I've mentioned, if price action stay where it's at, where it's at or goes lower, may end up being unplugged for quite a while until we get that bullish action, right? So the things you kind of want to think of ahead of time, start looking at, um, especially right now, right? While these alts are getting hit hard. Um, something to think about there. Um, so overall though, guys, just for the most part, am nibbling, am hoping for bigger dips. Will they come? Maybe, maybe not, 
right? You got to be prepared for both. But if you're feeling like you need to get some more right now, it's not a bad time. But again, we may go down further. My personal prediction is, again, August, September, not going to be not too good. It is possible that we go up again in October, November, December. And then potentially dump again, right? Who knows? We'll see how the market goes. We'll see what news we get. Um, the one thing I am kind of keeping an open mind to, right? Typically, I follow the cycles. But one thing that is kind of like the gut feeling thing, when I say we're going with your gut, is I, I don't think we're going to have that that crazy extended time after the halving where we go into the bull market, right? Like if we look at the previous cycles, it's something like five to six months. It's usually that October, November where we start going up, right? I have a funny feeling that it might start early this time, right? Only reason being is that there's so much institutional interest. I think that's going to have a lot to do with it. The fact that we might pivot all around the same time, like it's possible that we get ETF approvals. A lot of people are predicting sometime like Q1 2024. That also might be around the time we start to pivot potentially. So there's a lot of things that can potentially kickstart it early, right? So will it happen? Who knows? But I'm definitely keeping my eyes open. And I'm going to accumulate with the worst case scenario in mind that it does happen early. Because keep in mind, if it does happen early, these next few months might be the lows, period, right? Not only for the coins, but also for the hardware, right? So, like, this was kind of my timeline for choosing. I have room for one more ASIC. Ideally, kind of waiting a little bit longer. I was waiting for WDMS. So far, the only news we got is that S21. I was hoping for L9 news because I'm hoping it comes out prior to the price appreciation. Just to get it cheap, because at this point, if it comes out after, the thing's going to be 20K plus, And at that point, who cares? I'm not interested. So we'll see. Right? I may buy another one. I may not. Right? Just depends on if something new comes out at that point prior to any price appreciation. Right? So again, it's not guaranteed. It's not for sure. We may just follow the cycle exactly. Right? Because that's another thing you always hear. Oh, this feels different. This feels different. But to me, what is different is the institutional interest. Right? And that's another big reason why... Kind of felt really good about a dip happening, pretty good dip between now and the halving, just because the fact that BlackRock's in, to me, that confirmed that they want good entry points. Not necessarily them, right? Because as we know, we saw that last video and you guys caught it. We were talking about how they've been investing in the mining companies. They, they've had their hands in for a long time. So chances are they already have a pretty good allocation. But it's more so for all these other institutional interests that are going to need to accumulate, right? So... Chances are they're going to want to get a good entry point. So to me, that's confirming it now, right? Whether or not this is it, who knows? My personal guess is that we are going to go lower. How low? I don't think we're going to go to 15, 16 anymore. Maybe like 20s, right? Maybe low 20s, somewhere around there. But just keep in mind, if that does happen, how wrecked a lot of these bigger alts are going to get, right? So if, if just 10% going down, these things are lower than the one-year lows, then might be some good entry points, right? So again, you wanna establish that game plan, however you wanna do it, right? Set up your own thing. Again, that's just the way I do it, the way I'm looking at it, the way I'm thinking about it, right? Everybody's goals are gonna be different. Everybody's ways of accumulating are gonna be different. I know some of you guys have like 40, 50 coins and you just, you know, mine when it's early, early on for a few weeks and you hang on to that bag, right? And that's not a bad strategy either. Again, there's no like best way to do this. It's only what makes most sense in your head and what your overall goals are. Right, because realistically, I could be doing this, and some of the coins I'm into might go to zero. It's completely possible. Look what happened with Luna, look what happened with any of those. It's possible, guys. Right, so again, you have to do your own research, look at that coin. But the, again, the one thing I would recommend participate in that network, get a good feel for it, because that's going to let you know, like, oh man, these transactions are super fast. It's super easy, it's super intuitive. People are going to have no issues with this. They're building, they're doing gaming, they're doing this, they're doing that. That way you get a real feel for it, right? And that way that you can make a very well-informed decision instead of just taking this guy's word for it or whatever, whatever. Again, do your own research, guys, like for real, like get into it, get into that ecosystem, participate in that ecosystem, right? Learn everything you can about it because that's the only way you're really going to learn and you're really going to feel bullish or bearish on it, right? If you don't like the direction it's going towards, that way when you find a good opportunity to go into or pivot into one you do like, can take advantage of that right so again like even with me i'm pretty open 
but I'm fairly confident in all the ones I've picked only because again I heavily researched a lot of these are ones that I've been DCing into for the past few years right since I started okay so again guys just wanted to keep you updated just to give you different ideas different perspectives I know a lot of people don't like talking about it what they're into what they're doing how they allocate I don't really mind right I'm kind of just experimenting purpose of this channel is more for documentation right let me throw that out there also actually if any of you guys are interested in creating content if you've thought about it even if you're not like crazy personality do it it is so interesting it is so cool to be able to like look back at your thought process to me that's the big the biggest thing that's why a lot of my videos are so like ranty and so long is just because i want to like fully convey my thought process not just for content purposes, but even for my purpose. Like, it's pretty interesting. Like, even right now, I'm almost at a year now. But, like, looking back at videos from, like, nine months ago, fully being able to see what my thought process was. Like, why was I so bullish on this? Why was I thinking this? It's been pretty cool to be able to see that, right? Especially with the coins that either have done well or haven't done well, which I've been lucky. I've been fortunate that most of them have done well. And it's just from, this is why I say it a lot, is trust your gut trust what you think is happening trust your intuition whether you're somebody who's new and a lot of times you have an advantage as being a new person because you have a different perspective you're not entrenched in that bubble that unfortunately a lot of people get stuck in you have a different perspective a different viewpoint right and that's why i encourage you guys to get out of that bubble learn different things like why learn about it. even if you're not so interested in about it, learn why people are interested about it Right? Maybe on the back end you feel bullish on it. Like, oh, what? why are people so hyped on NFTs? What is the point there? Maybe understand as to why and maybe not necessarily invest in NFTs, but maybe invest on that infrastructure. Right? Like, that's a big reason ETH is going to be so big. Whether you guys like it or not, that's where the majority of DeFi is, where NFTs are, that base layer, all these layer twos. What is the base layer? ETH, right? So if you think any of those are going to do well, invest in that base layer, right? That's a good way to get into that network but anyways guys just uh trying to open your minds right look at different things look at different opportunities right i know people hate on nfts and stuff all the time but dude i made more eth flipping nfts this year than i did mining ETH for two years right so if you're into things you want to learn things learn about it there's so many opportunities to make money all over crypto right but you have to learn about it get in that ecosystem and expand your mind right so thank you for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys are doing. If you guys are accumulating, if you guys are buying hardware, you guys are just holding off because you think we're going to go down lower. Or if you're done buying, you think we already hit the low, all to hit the low, and this is it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching, guys, and I am out.